working. Uh, thanks for being here. My name is John Prater, as uh, Barbara mentioned. I'm the program coordinator for the Integrated Energies Technology programs here at Colorado Mount College, which includes process technology, instrumentation, drafting, welding programs, uh, solar programs, and of course the, the bioenergy project that, uh, can you guys hear me all right or do I need to talk into this thing? Can you hear me okay back there? Or do I need to stand over here? Is this, is this better? Okay. I like to move around, so this is limiting for me. I need to get one of those wireless jobs that uh, that would allow me some freedom. Um, I know nothing about grass, <laughs> unless we roll back to the '60s, and you know, and I had a little experience there, but uh, we won't get into that. <clears throat> What I you got a handheld mic there. Lee, I do. There you can use that if you want to. Oh, perfect. Is it on? <laughs> Test one two. It, can you hear me? Yes. All right. I have mobility. This is that. This is that wireless technology I was talking about. Except I've seen the ones you know you put on your collar and uh, you don't have to hold the mic. Um, my job here in the, in this project is to take the grasses that are being developed and researched by Calvin and his crew at CSU and then physically transform them into something else, the biofuel. Uh, you've already seen this slide, so we won't go over this. Uh, I stole most of this from Calvin, by the way. <clears throat> but brief history of WCCMBC and it gives you an idea of uh, what we've done and where we've been. In spring of 2009, we began uh, production of or construction of the pilot plant, which is in the backyard of the college here, which we'll see a little later on today. And I'm a little nervous because it's actually, portions of it are actually running right now. So I kind of have to pay attention to that. I've been running in and out. You might see me going back and forth. So I have to pay attention to what's going on out there to make sure that I don't have any problems uh, that might occur out there. At any rate, we began construction of this plan, and it originally started, our idea was to, in the process technology program, we trained operators for industry, essentially, and for all industries, not just the oil and gas industry, but for water water treatment facilities, power generation, pharmaceuticals, manufacturing, any industry utilizes process operators and instrumentation technicians. So we train operators and instrumentation technicians for those programs. And our idea, our idea was to put together a plant, a working plant, that our students could actually produce a product. So we originally started with the idea of producing an ethanol plant. And my original thought was to take a lot of the waste fruit from down in the Palisade area, and which would be easily converted, and we could convert that to the ethanols. We uh, watched the city of Rifle through here on a, on a uh, show and tell one day, and they came up with the idea that we should hook up with Calvin, because Calvin had a similar project going on, except he was doing the research on the agricultural side. So we did that, and you know, the whole history is where we are now. Um, but that's basically the way it developed, or the way it started from our end. Yeah, you've seen this as well, so we'll move right through this. Uh, our big goal, again, at CMC is to produce a working model, a research facility, a plant where we can actually take the grasses and convert them to the butanols. And you've seen this one, so we'll get through that. You've seen this one, our research goals. Mine are uh, just a little bit different, and the only the only difference is really here, uh, where we're really interested again in the conversion of these grasses. I, again, if you ask me, I don't, I wouldn't know one grass from another. I have no idea. I just have to depend on Calvin and others who are are really uh, uh, educated in that area to tell me what grass is what, and and I have to depend on other colleagues to tell me 
what the biomasses, the chemistry of them are. I can tell you all about the conversion process and the production, but I can't tell you anything about how to grow it or what it is even. They just give me bales of hay and, and we're going to convert those to fuels. <clears throat> and again, the primary research objective for us is to convert the biofuels. Uh, you've seen this slide already, so we'll get through this. I'm not probably going to be a little uh, briefer than my colleagues because much of this you've already seen. And I want to get right to the heart of what we're doing. At, here at Rifle Campus, we'll convert the crops, in, crops into butanol and mixed alcohols as proof of the concept. And that's the whole objective of what's going on in the backyard right now. <clears throat> this is a schematic overview of the process plant that we're in. The, we are building in the backyard as we speak. Uh, this would be our primary grinding, and that's where we just take the hay and grind it up into small particles and then dump it into a larger vessel, which would be this vessel right here. We would then have to heat that up. We have to add some sulfuric acid to it, heat it up, bring it up to a temperature. It has a resonance time in that vessel, and that's part of the conversion process. It will start to break the cellulose down and convert it into the butanols. From that vessel, we'll go into a second vessel where we will neutralize the acid, bring the pH back to somewhere between 5 and 7. <clears throat> we'll add enzymes to it, and those enzymes will start to break that cellulose material down and convert it to sugars. Once that process is complete, it'll go into a third vessel. Um, and prior to going to this vessel, we will screen the material, we'll filter it, We'll take any of the solid material out uh, with a filter press, and then we were, our plan, current plan is to pelletize that material because we'll still have good uh, value. And our current thinking is there, there are three primary uses that we might have for those pellets. One would be supplemental feed for cattle or livestock. The other could be to produce pellets that could be burned in a pellet stove, but as uh, Morgan mentioned, we're talking about a lot of feedstock here, so that's a lot of pellet stoves. Probably the most viable and economic use for the, for the waste material or the bottom material would be as a supplemental feed. So we're looking at that and we're going to test the, the bottom product and see how, what kind of value it's going to have and whether maybe something else had to be added to it in order to make it a, a suitable feed. So that's part of what we're doing as well. And that'll happen between these two vessels here. Goes into the third vessel where we add bacteria, which attack the sugars that we've produced in the second vessel and convert those to the butanols. So all of this that you see here is simply what we call the pretreatment process, getting us ready to, to extract the butanols from this water mixture that we have. <clears throat> from there, it'll go into a reboiler and in this reboiler, we're simply heated up to the, and these two, two, this mixture of water and butanol have separate boiling points, so we'll separate by boiling points, by, by the vapor point of these products. We'll boil the water off and, and then recondense it to use later, and the butanol will come off the bottom of the tower and, and, uh, and go into a collection or a holding tank, and you'll see part of that facility. That's the actual unit that I have running out in the yard right now. The reboiler, the distillation column, and the condenser. So those of you who decide that you want to to uh, wander outside to the backyard with me a little later on will get to see this portion of the process running. <clears throat> From there the mixture will go into a uh, holding tank where we'll run it through a molecular sieve the molecular sieve is designed to take out any water that remains with the butanol. And we believe that there'll be a small percentage of water that stays with the butanol uh, after distillation, roughly as much as 5%. So we'll run it through a molecular sieve. All a molecular sieve is, um, most of us have, are familiar with this product. It's a dissicant. It, it comes in little packages in our beef jerky comes in little packages in our um, uh, electronic products. When you buy an electronic product and you open the box, there's this little pack of dryer, drying material in there to absorb the water. That's all this stuff is. It's this 
discipline or molecular sieve material. Ours is ceramic and it has microscopic holes in it. The holes in the ceramic beads are just large enough to accept a three atom molecule, water, H2O, and, and small enough to reject a larger molecule like ethanols or butanols. So it'll absorb the water and allow the butanol to pass through. <clears throat> At that point, we produced a usable fuel. Now it sounds pretty simple, but in reality it's uh, fairly complex and, and uh, time consuming process. And the real time consuming part for us is actually building the appropriate facility that will, um, that will produce this. This is our fabrication shop in the backyard. For those of you who are interested, we'll look in the side there. This is where most of of this equipment that you'll see in the backyard is being constructed and put together. It's right up on the hill out back here. <clears throat> That's uh, one of our one of our students um, working on a piece of equipment in the shop. That's one of the tanks that you'll see outside. It looks a little different than uh, than that now. Not a lot. We uh, haven't piped this one in yet, so <clears throat> we're, we're working on it. That's the yard where the uh, facility will be located and it looks quite a bit different now than uh, when you when we wander out there in a little bit uh, quite a bit different now than what it does in this photograph we've got a lot more equipment out there and again this distillation column that you see here is now sitting about right here and facing in a different direction and it's hopefully operating as we speak <clears throat> we have a large array of solar panels that we've collected the industry partners have donated to us these came to us from Williams we're going to utilize these solar panels and set up an array on the outside of the fence on the back side here and utilize that to help power the uh, facility. That's the actual distillation unit and reboiler that we've constructed and again uh, it'll look a lot different when you see it uh, now. There's a lot more equipment and, and uh, control apparatuses here. The burner's been attached, the, the stack's been attached. Uh, it'll look quite a bit different and again hopefully it'll be operational. We'll be doing something when we go out there. <clears throat> That's a compressor unit that was donated to us by Encana. Um, most of the pumping systems and the automated systems that we will utilize in the process will be run by compressed air. We'll have very few electric motors out there. Part of the reason for that is uh, butanol is a flammable liquid and once we produce that we have to pay attention to the kind of uh, electrical sparks and things like that that we generate. So we're going to use pneumatic pumps in a lot of the operation. So we've got to have a large volume of compressed air for the pumping systems and for the instruments that we control through pneumatics. <clears throat> That's the molecular sieve material there. Uh, as you can see, it's little tiny ceramic beads and got, they have microscopic holes in them. This will be the molecular sieve uh, filter that we build. And what, the way this will work is we'll have canisters sitting inside these pots with these molecular beads, uh, the molecular sieve beads in the, in the pots. And we will filter the butanol through those. The water will be absorbed in these beads. The beads will be regenerated through a heat process simply dry them out. It's like putting them in the oven and, and cooking the water off of them. Once we have run them through the molecular sieve and they absorb water, we'll have to regenerate them so they can be used again. And that's just a simple process of putting them in an oven, essentially, baking the water out, and then we can reuse the beads. <clears throat> uh, you've seen this. This is a recap of basically what you've already heard from Calvin and from Morgan. So I won't really go into that. We have a, a huge need, one of our big concerns is that we can be in a position to help provide our region with a economically viable fuel that will help us replace the fossil fuels that we use. And again, the primary production or the primary use of fossil fuels in this day and age are for transportation. When you break out a, a hydrocarbon string like crude oil, the bulk of that hydrocarbon string, the bulk of the use for that in, in our 